There have been many ballads written about the United Irishmen Rebellion of 1798. There is The Wind That Shakes the Barley by Robert Dwyer Joyce and The Boys of Wexford, also by Joyce. Additionally, we have Ethna Carberry's Roddy McCorley, The Rising of the Moon by John Keegan Casey and The Ballad of Henry Joy by T.P. Cummins. There is also the old street ballad, The Croppy Boy, the opening verse of which went as follows. Was early, early, all in the spring The birds did whistle and sweetly sing Change in their notes from tree to tree And the song they sang was old Ireland free There was, however, another ballad called The Croppy Boy, the words of which were first published on the 4th of January 1845 in the Dublin-based newspaper The Nation. containing eleven four-line verses and beginning with Good men and true in this house do dwell To a stranger bocal I pray you tell This croppy boy was written by William B. McBurney To date, no images of William B. McBurney have been found and what we know of him is largely based on a lengthy article published on the 16th of September, 1899, on the front page of The Boston Pilot, a weekly newspaper owned and edited by Patrick Donahoe. According to Donahoe, and a few other sources besides, McBurney was born in County Down. He later found work in Belfast before emigrating to New York State, just days after his croppy boy was included in the nation, and just as famine was about to grip the island of Ireland. When settled in America, McBurney, who often used the pseudonym Carol Malone, contributed numerous poems and short stories to the Boston Pilot. The majority of his submissions to the pilot were published between July 5, 1845 and June 24, 1848. A book published in 1885, Initials and Pseudonyms, compiled in New York by William Cushing, refers to McBurney, or Carol Malone, as an American journalist. McBurney clearly had a detailed knowledge of Belfast, and this is particularly evident in his poem Sally Fagan, A Tale of the Troubles, 1798, which the pilot ran on the 25th of January, 1845. Sally Fagan mentions landmarks like the River Lagan, Divis Mountain, Blackstaff, Malone and Ballysillen. The Boston Pilot published McBurney's Croppy Boy on the 1st of November, 1845. It included the following introduction from McBurney himself. The following little piece was inserted in The Nation last January. Some alterations were made in it which, though I didn't like them, suggested a little more polishing of the verses. As I understand, It has attracted some attention in Ireland. I shall be glad to bring it out again in its most correct form. Carol Malone On St. Patrick's Day, 1855, the pilot republished The Croppy Boy. This time, the writer's name was not given as Carol Malone, but as William B. McBurney, 
formerly of Belfast, Ireland. The famous Irish rebel haircut, known as the croppie, was a style adopted by many United Irishmen before and during the 1798 rebellion, and it was modelled on the French revolutionist haircut, short at the back and sides, with free-falling locks on the top. It's no surprise they chose this particular style because, like their counterparts in France, Irish insurgents saw coiffured powdered wigs, or periwigs, as symbols of a corrupt aristocracy. So the croppie became a symbol of rage against the periwigged machine. McBurney's Croppy Boy tells the story of a young croppie going to the house of the local priest, Father Green. He is there for one reason, to confess to Father Green, who, he hopes, will absolve him of all of his sins. The door is opened by what appears to be the housekeeper, who asks the lad to wait in the room off the hall while she goes to get the priest. When Father Green arrives, he is clothed in his vestments and, unusually, is wearing a large hooded cape which partially shields his face. In the semi-darkened room, the lad, or Bochel, begins his confession, lamenting the fact that his father had recently been killed by Crown forces at the Battle of New Ross in County Wexford and that his brothers had been killed in the town of Gorey. I will go now to Wexford town to take their place, he tells Father Green, adding, I bear no hit against a living thing, but I love my country above my king. At this point, the priest removes his cape, and the young croppie is shocked to see before him a red-coated yeoman captain. With fiery glare and fury hoarse, the captain tells the young croppy that he is now under arrest, and then proceeds to show him three boats sitting in the nearby harbour, all full of captured rebels. Your priest could well be in one of those boats, says the red coat, if he's not already dead, and may all traitors swing. <laughs> The young croppie is led away under escort to Passage East in County Waterford and is placed with other rebels in Geneva Barracks, where he dies, most probably as a result of execution. In the late 1880s, Dublin-born baritone William Ludwig, born William Ledwidge, a former member of the Carl Rosa Opera Company did much to popularise the ballad in Ireland and America. Both the Croppie Boy and Ludwig were subsequently mentioned in James Joyce's Ulysses. Ludwig decided to sing McBurney's words to a melody he sourced in the Fitzwilliam Virginal Songbook, also called the Virginal Book of Queen Elizabeth. This melody, called Kalino Castorami, was composed in the 16th century by English composer William Byrd. But did William Byrd actually compose it? Or was he heavily influenced by the ancient Irish air Kalin Ochish Tsurame, in English, I am a girl from beside the river shore? It seems the latter is the case. Not only did Byrd derive his title from Cali no Chush Tsurame, but his melody sounds uncannily similar to the ancient Irish air. You could say then that when wedding McBurney's croppy boy to Byrd's melody, William Ludwig was reclaiming 
an important part of Irish musical heritage. This is Charlotte Schreiber, an English-born artist who set up home in eastern Canada. Schreiber was so inspired by McBurney's ballad that in 1879 she rendered its entire story to canvas. Titling her work The Croppy Boy, The Confession of an Irish Patriot, her painting was exhibited at numerous art galleries. The accompanying catalogue including verses from McBurney's ballad. In 1899, the Boston pilot recorded that William B. McBurney, or Carl Malone, died in 1892. Others, however, say that he died in 1902. Whatever the case, McBurney will be forever remembered as the man who immortalised in verse the story of the Croppy Boy. Good men and true in this house to dwell To a stranger boo I pray you tell Is the priest at home Or may he be seen I would speak a word With Father Green the priest's at home, boy, and may be seen. Tis easy speaking with Father Green. But you must wait till I go and see if the holy man alone may be. The youth has entered an empty hall What a lonely sound is his light footfall And the gloomy chamber so chill and bare Where a vested priest sits upon a chair The youth has knelt down to tell his sins Nominee day he thus begins At me a culpa he beats his breast And in broken murmurs he speaks the rest At the siege of Ross did my father fall and at gory, my brothers all I alone am left of my name and race I will go to Wexford and take their place I said three foul words since last Easter day once at time of mass I did go and play I passed the churchyard One day in haste And forgot to pray For my mother's rest I bear no hate Against no living thing but I love my country above my king Now Father bless me and let me go To die if God has ordained it so
The priest said not, but a rustling noise made the youth look round, all in wild surprise. The robes were off and in scarlet there sat a yeoman captain with fiery glare. With fiery glare and with fury hoarse, instead of blessing he breathed a curse. Twas a good thought, boy, to come here and shriv. For one short hour is your time to live. Upon yon river three tenders float. The priest's in one, if he isn't shot. We hold this house for our Lord the King. And amen, I say, may all traitors swing. At Geneva barracks, this young man died. And in passage lies by his mother's side. A lone thorn is there, and a few pass by. Leave one tear and prayer for the crappy boy.